Be healed. Be set free. Be delivered. This is Apostle Stephen Amaker. And this is Lady A. You are listening to the internet radio broadcast of Deliverance by Faith Ministry. Today we will be discussing the issues of our churches, our society, and our communities based on biblical principles. Hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking through our panelists today. Shots. Ten repeated shots and then a couple of minutes later, around the corner, a few more shots. Pastor Stephen Amaker woke up to this scene here at the corner of Gates Avenue and Marcus Garvey Boulevard. Of course, the pastor had no idea what was going on. No idea that an NYPD officer, John Hirschberger, had been shot in the leg. Police tell us around 2.30 this morning, a sergeant and another officer noticed a man with a gun in his waistband. They approached the 22-year-old, but he took off running. And by the time the suspect saw Officer Hirschberger and his partner, police say the suspect stopped, pulled out this handgun, and fired on them, then took off again. Hirschberger has a graze wound, and the suspect was shot in the back. The shooting comes as no surprise to people who live in this neighborhood, but it's a harsh reality to Pastor Amica. We just had some more shots today. So, I mean, we got to do something about this. This is, this is really ridiculous in our neighborhood that crime crime is at its peak. We need a, we need a positive change in our neighborhood. Nicole Johnson, Pix11 News. All right, God bless you. This is Apostle Stephen Amaker, and this is Deliverance by Faith Bible Study. Yes, we're starting another adventure venue for the work of the Lord. This is the beginning of uh, some awesome things. I already believe God is going to move and do an awesome work tonight, even tonight, and even as we venture into weekly Bible study. So prayerfully, uh, every Tuesday night right here, you'll hear... uh, we will be uh, doing our weekly Bible study. This is this is a Bible study where we come to study the Word of God, to hear what the Word of God is saying, to hear what the Word of hear what the Lord is speaking to us, His people. And uh, thank the Lord. And. Uh, we pray that he that have a ear will hear what the Spirit is saying through us, to us, the body of Christ. All right. God, thank God for for uh, for you that taking your time out to listen to this and that you will be fed and be enlightened, be uplifted and that you will also know and hear the will of God for us, his people. That's what we want, the will of God for our, for us, his people, that we will know what is the will and what does God want. Because obviously, uh, I think that, I think, we think things are his will, but it's not. We think that it's his will, well, okay, let me put it this way. We think, people think, let's say it this way. People think it's God's will for us to be uh, uh, beloved above all things. It, uh, uh, God says, I wish that you prosper and be in good health. Okay, yes, it is. But we're missing, we're missing the, vital, the vital part of that, which is even as your soul prospers. So Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? So, wait a minute. You can't tell me that God wants us wealthy and prosperous and yet die and go to hell. That's not the will of God. That's not the will of God for us. That's not the will of God, period. At any man, he says, it's not my will. Uh, I I don't desire for any man to be lost, but, but. We 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 put we put the cart before the horse, so to speak. God wants us rich, yes he does. But God also wants us to live holy. And God also wants us to do right and 
treat our neighbors right and to and those of us that are in ministry that we minister with with uh not only simplicity but honesty ministering without crafting ministering the things of God that he would have for us and I'm 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 the Holy Ghost, I'm even, even that I'm talking, what's in my spirit for the night, I'm already talking about it, and we're going to go further. Thank the Lord for my wife, uh, Lady A, being here, and we're going to just jump in, and we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to see what the Lord is saying to us. God bless you, Lady A. God bless you. Hello, uh, internet. Audience. <laughs> Glad to be in the Bible study tonight. Hopefully that we will say something that will, you know, give clarity and understanding to maybe questions in the area that may, the area that we are speaking upon, that we may get some clarity and that we all can learn together. Okay, we're reading Acts, the eighth chapter, and. Okay, let's just start at the first verse. Honey, would you start reading, please? Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Okay. Now, Saul was consenting to the death of Stephen. And the, you know, the church was not there, and the apostles was not there. Uh, uh, was, was Stephen uh, was being uh, uh, stoned at. But the church, again, was scattered and, and just, Everybody, everybody, because and yet we are still just coming out of the, the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. So the the church is really just starting out. And the twelve, the twelve apostles were, were were where they were, but they were not in this area. So I want us to get clear understanding to the verses and what we're reading tonight. Go ahead. Devout men carried Stephen to his burial and yeah. made great lamentation over him. Because of what he did, the, the, the significance of his life, the miracles and the good works that they did, and, 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 and they, were, they were grieving, they were grieving, but they honored who he was. And so they, they took him for burial after he was stoned. And Paul, Paul was holding the coat and consenting to them, right? He was standing there and saying, go ahead, do it, do it. And, and he was, that was Paul's job uh, at that time. He was going around to, uh, to synagogues and to temples and finding Christians and bringing them before uh, the, the council and, and having them thrown in prison and killed and what have you. And so Paul, because of the work that God was doing through Stephen, Paul at that time, before his conversion, before his conversion, I want you all to understand, before his conversion, he was, he was, he was a bad guy. I mean, he, 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 he did all kinds of stuff against the body, Christ and, and, and the church. And so this is where we are, this is where we are now. Third verse. Go ahead. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hating men and women. Hold it, lady. Uh, uh, for those of you that may be elementary in the Bible, uh, I said Paul, but before his conversion, his name was Saul. So that's who we that's who we this third verse is talking about Paul before his conversion as Saul. Same person, same person, just different name. And having men and women committed them to prison. 
Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. Yeah. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Okay, now Philip, one of the apostles, he goes down to an area. He goes down to an area. The Samaritans and the Jews, they once were one, but because of uh, different beliefs and traditions, they separate. And so now it's like it's like you're going into a foreign land and now trying to preach Jesus, which the Jews and the Samaritans really had no, no because you know Jesus, and so when Jesus met the woman and said, said, what do I have to do with you, you uh, Samaritans? Because the Jews and the Samaritans didn't pretty much mingle. Right. But Paul went down there ministering to them. Go ahead. He says, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Look at that. Wait a minute now. The people... They heard, they heard the preaching, they received the preaching, and because, watch this, because Philip was preaching the gospel, the Bible says that with the word shall come signs and wonders, miracles. Okay, I'm going somewhere with that. I'm going somewhere. The miracles started coming because Paul, oh, I'm sorry, Philip was preaching the gospel. And the people, watch this, watch this, they received their hearts. They received the word that they heard. So because they received the word, then the Holy Ghost was able to work freely among them. That's like when we went and we, uh, I, we ministered last Saturday to that in 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 the ministry out there, and and because the people received us with love, we 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 did not feel we did not feel ill because of the love that they showed us. We, we hey, let it all go, let it let it all go. Just whatever the Lord, the Holy Ghost want to do, however He want to work, however He want to. And so we felt free. The, 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 the atmosphere was free for the Holy Ghost to move as he wanted to. And we felt the freedom in the Holy Ghost to move because the people received the word and received our ministry. Amen. Go ahead. For unclean spirits flying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with the can, can, can you do us a favor? Can you go back? What is that, the fifth verse, and start reading again at the fifth verse? Fifth verse. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Philip goes down to Samaria and preached Christ, preached Jesus to the Samaritan. Read And the people with one accord. The people with one accord. They heed unto those things which Philip spake. They heard, they accepted, they received the word of God with freedom and with one accord. Everybody, okay, everybody, all all those that heard the word were standing there approving and receiving and accepting the word that they heard. So nobody was there, I don't believe this. Nobody was there that, you know, he ain't, he ain't, you know, uh, 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 you know, making making accusations and oh, he preaching too long or he preached he ain't said this or he ain't said that. But they were listening and receiving as Paul Peter was Philip. I'm sorry, as Philip was preaching, they were receiving whatever was coming out of Philip's mouth as gospel, as the gospel. And so, because as a result, now watch this: when the word comes forth, as I always say. Healing, deliverance, salvation has to has to show up. Why? Because it is attracted to the word. So, because he was preaching the gospel, 
the word of God, then what, is, what, what, what happened? Read now. He says, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Yeah. But the unclean spirit crying. Watch, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Watch. They're seeing. Now they're seeing. Now they're seeing the word come forth with power and demonstration. They're seeing blind eyes open, deaf ears. This, this, the, 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 the evil spirits that were in people are now crying out, and people are getting delivered. Yeah. People are getting healed. Even so, in that same scripture, it talks about even people who were sick with the palsy. Palsy was the worst disease other than leprosy in the New Testament. Palsy was the worst disease because it was a crippling disease. But they were watching them be ill. Why? Because the word was coming. So now watch this, watch this, watch this. I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself, but I am. But because, because now I'm trying to figure out what is being preached today because we don't see this. We're hearing a lot of preaching. A lot of people is preaching, but why are we not seeing healing, deliverance, salvation, and 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 all these things happen? Miracles and signs and wonders are being being brought forth by the preaching. So that lets me know that we are not preaching the full gospel because our congregations are. They have these same different things that they're saying here in the scripture about the unclean spirits, um, the ones that possess uh, with devils and the lame, the sick people. Oh, so they're we, all sitting in, they're coming so, to church so, oh, every so, Sunday. Oh, oh so, so we still got people with devils and, and sick and lame in our services today. Right. Just like they had then. Just like So they. now... So now, so okay, so this was happening then, why is it not happening now? Because, because we're not preaching the gospel. You're preaching a gospel, a, a, a diluted gospel. It's not the word of God. And and then, watch this, the preach, the, the, the vessel that is preaching the word, you can't preach what's not in you. If you don't live holy, you can't preach holiness. And they want to see see the manifestation that comes with it. So that means that means that watch this. You have to watch. You have to look at who is preaching, who's up talking. You gotta become focused. Do I see the fruit? You preach it, yeah. See now today's church, like and Paul said that. After his conversion, Paul later on he says, I'm not coming to you with enticing words. And today's church like to hear a lot of words. They like to hear big words and and and, and fancy words and 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 the bigger the word, woo, damn. But you don't even know what it means. But but you like to hear, you like to be in it makes you feel better. Watch this. It makes some people feel better to be in that atmosphere that that's going on in. Oh, well, he got his doctorate in this, and he's a great theologian. So you want to go and you want to hear people spit out words that you don't even know. But it makes people who look at you think that you are on their their level. In other words, watch this. Ebonic folks hang out with Ebonic folks. Learn educated people hang out with educated people. So you got uneducated people infiltrated the educated places so that people will think they're educated. Okay, wait a minute, you were better than that. You got people who never you got people today. You got people today, today, in today's society. Because right now, you got people coming up and saying, oh, what's your name? Oh, my name is Dr. So-and-so. And, 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 and we are not saying, well, where is your degree? Let me see your degree. You're just taking on their face value that they have a doctorate in some area. And most of the people who have, 
who say they're a doctor, don't even have a doctor, don't even have a high school GED, but they put doctor on their name to make them sound like they're up there. We met this guy, not, uh, me and another friend years ago, we met a guy, and and he, he, said, he said, yeah, man, I'm, I, 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 I'm doctor now. I'm doctor now. And we're looking at the guy and said, wait a minute, hold up. It takes 12 years, 12 years, natural years, for you to get your doctor. And the guy was young. So we said, well, wait a minute. For the age you are, that means you had to graduate college about 10 years old. Because 10 and 12, he would have been almost the age he was. He was about, about 25. 20, about 28 years old when we when you see him. So you come up talking about I'm a doctor now. How are you a doctor and you didn't you didn't you didn't do you didn't do your doctoral study. But if you don't investigate to see where let me see let me see your doctorate degree. You don't ask that you believe, okay, you doctor, then he goes, oh, he's doctor. That's doctor so-and-so now. I was in a, I was in a, a guy's office, and he, 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 I'm doctor so-and-so. So I was in his office, and I went there solely, purposely. I said, I want to see his degree. And, yeah, he had it up there on the wall, but the school he went to, was not state accredited. So it was it was by the city that we were in at that time. The city says, yes, he is a doctor. But the state did not accredit his 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 his, his doc, doctoral degree. And so you ain't no doctor. Because it got to be state accredited. Every degree has to have a state seal on it to say that the state recognizes you as a doctor, and they didn't have that. So, again, you got people saying things that make them look good, but but they're not there. And so you got people today saying, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, I'm bishop, I'm archbishop, I'm all of this, and to make them look good. But then, that thing is, it's the power. Even... Watch this. Even if you do say, I have the Holy Ghost. Simple thing. I have the Holy Ghost. What does the Bible say? When, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive what? Power. Bottom line, I don't see no power. There is no power. And, and again, okay, fast forward a lot. When, when you go to different churches and, and they have a prayer line and and the people up there laying hands on people, and they, oh, okay, wait, 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 hold, put a pin in that, put a pin right there, read. So unclean spirits praying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with these, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. The whole city was rejoicing because of the miracles, the miracles that we were seeing as a result of what? The preaching of the word, the preaching of the gospel. The recept not only just the preaching, but the reception of the gospel. Watch this. Watch this. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because the gospel was being preached and because they received it, they had revival. So wait a minute. They didn't pray for revival. But because they had a hunger for the word, it produced revival. So again, you don't pray for revival. Revival comes when people have a hunger for the word. And they're receiving the word. That produces revival. This is this is this is revival one oh one right here. Well, can I say this way church is set to today's church? Uh, there is a great difference in church I guess we, because of 
them knowing Jesus and the miracles and things that he did, and he went away and he, he had the apostles, and but their lifestyle, and they wanted to take on the work that Jesus left for them to do. And in today's church, it's not set up to even almost deal with people that have these different issues going on in their lives. Uh, some of the world of the churches that we have gone through, they don't want to take the time to, to deal with people that have issues in their life. Uh, if they're sick or, I mean, they'll pray, pray a quick prayer over them if they know uh, uh, evangelist such and such, a mother is going in the hospital on Monday for a, a procedure or something, and they'll say a short prayer over her there. But to to... But they're praying over her to send her into to the hospital. They're not praying over her that the Lord will deliver her in the services that is that she's in right now. So I mean, churches now is the the timing. They 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 don't. It's not set up for that anymore. Well, because 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 people have pastors and leaders have become lazy, and 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 the people watch this. The people have allowed and and people have allowed and recept, received lazy preachers, lazy pastors, lazy who they don't they don't pray, people don't pray. The people don't call for prayer. But watch this. The people shouldn't have to it's not the people's job to call for prayer. It's the pastor. It's the pastor. But he's lazy. He don't want to pray. He'd rather be on the golf course. No. He'd rather be. he rather be riding around, and he would rather. He would rather spend his time, and in in in. We're gonna get into that later. He would rather spend his time telling you how much you need to give, so he can have what he wants for himself, rather than to spend his time in fasting and praying. And seeking God for the people, well, and the church has become we tolerate that, and that shouldn't be tolerated because you keep going and see. I don't even know. I know you tolerate it because you keep going back there. You, you ain't getting spiritually. You ain't getting nothing. Financially, you're not getting nothing. And you're, and, and you're getting more than you're getting. But you keep going there. You keep, and because you keep doing that, the person says, "Well, why do I need? I need. I don't need to stop. I need to just keep on doing because it's working. It's working for me." And 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 if they people, okay, watch this. You got a you a doctor, a phys, a, a, a medical doctor. You're a medical doctor. You got a client. They come to you. Let's don't even go to medical doctor. Let's say you're a mechanic, car mechanic. Let's say let's say let's say you're a restaurant owner. I want you to put all those three categories because I'm trying to go places that we're more we 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 deal with on a daily basis. You you you, you go to a, a restaurant. Now this guy he got a restaurant. Food ain't no good. It's overpriced and 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 it don't taste good. And you go and spend your money daily. And you never say, hey, man, the food don't taste good. Hey, man, the prices are too much. Three, you need to do something about this place. But guess what? Every time you walk in, you're spending 20 or 30 dollars. You ain't complaining about the food. And, 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 and you don't mind the restaurant being in the shape of it. So guess what? What are you going to do? He's going to keep on selling you that food at the prices he's selling it. And, and the place going to keep looking the way it's looking because you won't say nothing. But if you stop, so now, who the fool? Never you. Because it's you that's going there spending your money, giving him service. So same thing with churches today. Who the fool? You see the man don't care about you. You see the people don't, and, and they think you ain't, you ain't growing spiritually. You see he's just wasting you and taking all your money and promising you this and doing this and 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 and, and you go up for prayer and, and, and he push you down 
and, and, and what have you, or no, he don't push you down, but everybody else is falling down, so you say, well, I'll fall down too. So, but you keep coming back. Now, who's the fool? Him or you? You are, because you keep coming. So why should I change? Keep on doing. You, you tolerate what I'm doing, so I'm going to keep on doing. All right. All right. All right. All right. But either that man is gonna have to get when it still boils down to it. If he if he wearing the, the head of a pastor or a shepherd, God's gonna God's gonna God's yeah, gotta no, deal with it. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute, Mason. Just, don't, just don't go there. Just don't go there now. Cause we're going there later. So we're gonna hit that with a, we're gonna hit that with a sledgehammer. Right there, what you're talking about. So uh, uh, I wanted I wanted us to get to it. I'm trying for us. I'm trying to to build us up to these things. These occurrences. Okay, so now we got revival in the city of Samaria. All right, let's read. But there was a certain man called Simon. Uh oh, watch this. Here we go. Here we go. And before time in the same city, you used sorcery and bewitched the people. Sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. To make him to make them think what? Giving out that himself was some greatness. Yeah. Okay. Just like today. Just like today. Oh, come on down. Yeah. I lay my hand on you. Yeah. God 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 is gonna do what God is gonna do this. The blind eyes and, and you don't been there five years and you ain't seen one you you ain't seen you ain't seen people with cataracts get healed and delivered. But yet, he, he, he put the, I, I am the man of God. I am, Jesus said, Jesus told us, Jesus told us that in the last days, people will, people, not so much, and you have to understand the translation. People come and say, I am. I am God's prophet. I am God's man. I am. And and I don't want to waste my favor. If I be a prophet of God, <laughs> that's gonna come back and bite him later. <laughs> and you run out there because he said he was, but you did not investigate to see whether or not. So where 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 where? And and watch this. Now we were talking to. We was talking to this guy who's now a bishop, and and he was talking about his ministry, and so I'm sitting there listening to him, and he was talking about how whole oh, how people got healed, how people got people got set free and delivered. I'm saying yeah, okay, but when was that? 1975, 1982. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Where are we at? 2014 at that time. So what happened? God ain't did nothing with you in 30 years. And you still, but you still, you still, you still giving those testimonies, 30-year-old testimonies, and you out here preaching, and you mean to tell me God ain't used you in 30 years. If he's the same today, tomorrow, and yesterday, and forever, you're supposed to be still working and doing these things. The way he used you 30 years, wow, you should be, you should be, you should be calling fire down now. I mean, because you have, you have went deeper and further into the things of God. So you should have more miracles and more deliverances now than you did 30 years ago. But all you got is testimonies of what happened. 30 years ago, that ain't going to fly. But people still run. Oh, he said this happened. Yeah, but when did it happen? Nobody got healed or delivered in your ministry since 2022, 20, two, the year 2000. Truth be told. Truth be told, nobody got delivered since the year 2000 in your ministry. And and, and, and the person is not talking about, oh, Come on down, because the Lord is here, and he's, but I don't see nobody, I don't see. And watch this, watch this. 
Here we go with this. This is the big one. This is the big one. If God was really using you and and you were having miracles, you wouldn't have to advertise. If you was having real miracles in your ministry, you would not have to advertise. Because why? Word of mouth. <laughs> soon, as people, soon as people heard, they heard Jesus was coming, they started, they started making their way to wherever he was going to be. Because they knew, if I get there, I'm going to get a miracle. And that's the way it was when you, I mean, when you read it over here in 67, and they were talking about that once they heard the word, and then the people that was there, they had the, the thing, whole city. They had the, uh, those that was possessed with them, palsy, lame. They were they was trying to get that, but they heard, they heard the word that fell there. To hear the word, they only said when once uh, to hear the word, then the miracle followed. So you don't have to advertise. You don't have to get on the radio. You don't have to get on TV. I'm coming to your city. Man, all you got to do is make one phone call. Make one phone call. Hello, brother. Yes, sir. This is Apostle Stephen. Hey, Apostle. Yes, I will be in your city. What? You coming this way? That's just like the ministry that we ministered at. Uh, 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 They were telling us how many people have, have said, oh, my God. We, 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 he's coming, he's coming, but they were out of town, and different things were happening. The so, man, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. Because what? They know what they experienced the prior time we were there. So, so, so I didn't have to advertise. They advertised for me because of what they experienced and what they seen God do in our ministry, through our ministry. Read. To whom they all gave heed. From the least to the great, saying, "This man is the great power of God." All right, before before Philip got there, remember we in Samaria. They would they hadn't heard the gospel before Philip got there. They haven't heard the gospel. They heard Simon. They seen him do his witchcraft, do his. Do his stuff that he was doing, they seen and experienced that, but they had not heard the true gospel until before he before this happened. So, so yeah, if, if you don't, if you don't only rooster in the in the in house, you can walk around and brag and talk about you know how bad you are because if you ain't nobody else around. Then he was using sorcery. He was using was he wasn't he was tricking them. He was tricking them. No that's like people. That's like people. That's like that's like people. We see the guy. We see the guy. He get up. I said, "Oh, your leg gonna grow out. We are gonna make your leg grow out." He did. He did some more crazy stuff with your leg, and and he, Whoa, look at it. Whoa, look at it. He, he, he was the same way. But then, all right, you get up and run around. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Remember the movie Leap of Faith with Steve Martin? And there was an old lady. She came to the came to the service. She walked in. She walked in that tent. But they met her at the tent door with a wheelchair. And put her in the wheelchair and rolled her up to the front. And when she got up to the front with all the lights and everything, Steve Martin said, now get up and walk. She walked there. She walked in there. But when he said, get up and walk, she got up. The people didn't see her walking. All they see her on stage with the lights on walking in front of them. Wow. 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 Look at that. That's a miracle. Yeah, that is a miracle. They just gave the real city. <laughs> so, so you thinking, wow, look at this. This is a real, but she walked in there. Wasn't nothing wrong with her. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what this guy was doing. He was making them think 
that he was a a a a, a great powerful, yeah, in the things of God. Uh, and, and 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 watch this. This is another thing. You got to be careful. In and you got to know everybody who say God don't mean God to hope. Everybody, everybody, what the scripture say? Everybody, Lord, saying Lord, Lord, don't don't mean Lord Jesus, Lord. They 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 call because you got Satanists, you got you got every all these other religions saying, okay, it's like the, the Muslims say Allah is God. So so when people when the Muslims say God, he ain't talking about Jehovah God. When the Buddhists say God, he ain't talking about Jehovah God. He talking about Buddha. So people are saying God and the Lord and everything, but you got to find out. The Bible says try the spirit, by the spirit, to see whether or not it be a book of God. God said, God himself said there are other gods that are going out in the world. So you got to you got to understand this guy. He was going around saying, "I'm a man of God," but what God was he a man of God of? Because he was he he, he was not he was not. But what 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 was being what was being shown now? The true the workings of the true and living God is showing up what he was what he was tricking the folk to think and believe. Yeah, the so the truth, the truth is showing up. And the truth always going to outweigh and outshine the lie. All right. And to him they had regard because they saw that he was a long time he had equipped them with sources. So he was, the, he, was the, he was the hometown prophet for a long time. And people, people were... They were used to him. They seen him. They knew him for a long time, and and he was just out there for a long time. So it ain't no big deal. And they seen him. Hey, he, he, he was. Yeah, that's that's Simon. He, you know, he 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 he. Uh, but again, now Philip comes up, and 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 Philip is moving in true signs and wonders. So much so, now what happened to Simon? But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Good. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wonder, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. The truth. The truth. He heard the gospel. He knew he was not where. He knew he did not have what Philip had. Right. Right. Obvious. He knew that. He knew that. And that's what, that's what comes. That's how you can be convicted and repent because you know Man, I don't have what they have. You got the Holy Ghost? Yeah. But I don't have what they you you don't have the power, you don't have the you don't have the gifts, you don't have the fruit, you don't have the making, you don't have the workings of nothing. So I don't have okay, watch this. The Bible says when the Holy Ghost come upon you, the signs of the Holy Ghost is what? Speaking in tongues of power. All right, so people say, some people say, I don't speak in tongues. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. You don't speak in tongues. But then, I need to see some power. Okay, well, you don't have power, but I got tongues. But guess what? They work hand in hand, hand in hand. And so if you don't have one, you should have the other. And if you don't have the other, you should have the other one. So if you don't have neither one, power nor tongues, it's safe for me to say you don't have the Holy Ghost. And another thing he said, 
you know, that uh, Philip was preaching Jesus. And that's the difference between Simon and him. Simon was just bewitching, bewitching the people. But he Philip came, he, he came preaching the kingdom of God and preaching Jesus. And you know, sometimes people, I mean, some of people have gotten away from preaching about Jesus. Uh-oh. He said Uh-oh. he'd be lifted up. He'll draw all men unto him. But people can't be drawn because they're not lifting Jesus up. Okay, 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 okay. You're going, you're going, you're going there. And, you're going there. And another thing I want to say that it says, then Simon himself believed also. So when it, even though he wasn't preaching Jesus himself, but when he heard the gospel, when he heard Jesus preach, he, then he believed. And he was a sorcerer. He bewitched the people. But when the truth came, when Philip came preaching the truth, then he believed also. Mm. He mm. believed. Mm. Why? Because and he heard the truth. He heard the truth. He mm. believed, and that's what that's the requirement that 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 is 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 required for you to come into the kingdom is that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he believed, and he was baptized, and then he was baptized, and he continued on with Philip now because wow, his eyes have come open, you know. That you know, then he can say too. And then he said, a per and I got here a person dealing with sorcery can be saved if they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They can be saved. They can come into the knowledge of what they were doing. What they were doing was not right. And now they come. Now their eyes come open about Jesus being their being our Lord and Savior. And that he's here to offer salvation to all. So, really, if you even if you're in sin like you're in sin and, and have never really heard about Jesus, but if someone preaches the gospel, the real gospel of Jesus Christ, you can be saved. You can believe. And you can be baptized and receive just like everybody else. Okay. 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 Let's. Let's. Let's, let's digress. Let's go to Jeremiah 48 and 10. I got it, so let me read it. It says, Cursed be the man that doeth the work of the Lord. Watch this. Cursed is the man that doeth the work of the Lord. How? Deceitfully. And cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. So, cursed is the person who is deceiving who's doing the work of the Lord and deceiving people and watch this and keep that I, I watch this, watch this. The what, he, what the scripture right here says when it says Christian of the man that keeping his war back from blood. Watch this. I will not tell you the truth. Curses God says cursed is the man that will not tell you the truth. Why? Because he's trying to deceive. If I tell you the truth, you ain't gonna give me an offer. So I ain't gonna tell you the truth. So I can get that off. So you deceive it. You deceive the people. All right. So somebody say, well, we don't okay, so well, you New Testament saints. Second Corinthians, four and two. I got it. But I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Hey, uh, 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 this is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. This is what we're talking, this is what we preach, the truth. I don't, I, well, I don't like, I, I, I keep telling people, I don't preach one for doors, I don't preach because I'm trying to, trying to win influence and, and, and and celebrity and, and try to get a name for myself. I preach that people can be saved, delivered, and healed. And that only comes through the truth. It don't come through trickery and, 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 and lying and deceiving folks. God ain't going to honor that and he's not going to back it up. No, 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 no. And in this hour, we got a lot of people 
people are deceiving and being deceived. All right. Okay, wait a minute. All right. Okay. Deceiving people. Deceiving. I'm trying. Here we go. Give me a second. I'm on the computer here. Second Thessalonians. Get that, sweetheart. Second Thessalonians. Two. Two and three. I got it. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there comes a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Oh, 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 Ephesians 5 and 6. Ephesians. Ephesians Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Oh, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Be not therefore partakers with Uh oh. So wait a minute now. The person that is the person that is being deceived, the wrath of God coming, and the person that is deceiving, the wrath of God is coming. And 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 be not partaker with them. Wow. 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 So once you see once you see that they are deceiving people don't have fellowship with that person. That's right. Oh. You tell you, be not perfect is another man's sin. <laughs> if oh. you know he's deceiving people, then you need to cut yourself off away from him. So, shall you partake in that, unless you repent of it, then, hey, you stand before God. You have to give, give an account for that, you know, if you don't repent of it and cut yourself away from it. Mm-mm. Don't be partaker. Don't be partaker. And in this day and time that we're living in, and with the way churches, you know, uh, let me say pastors, because pastors is the one, pastors and pastors get the other fellowship, the church's fellowship. So it's the pastors. You know, but when you find out that that man, he that, that calls himself a pastor, and that he's not treating his sheep right, and and see that he bring in these wolves and 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 then they get the um get some getting off into that again. Um then you're not to be a partaker in that. When your eyes like apostle said, when your eyes come open to to what they're doing and you see what's going on, then you need to dismiss yourself. Romans. Romans, okay. We in the New Testament. Romans sixteen and eighteen. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies, and by good words, not works, words, and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. And she's the simple, simple people. Yeah, and they're, because, they're, you know, they're going along with whatever it is. If you tell them to go to the left, the sheep will go to the left. If you tell them to go to the right, if you push them over to the right, they go to the right. They'll go, so they're going to believe. They're going to believe. Sure. That's it. They don't know better. They don't know better. So they're going, whatever you, which way, whichever way you tell them, excuse me, whichever you way you. Right, if you tell them sin is right, okay, they're going to believe sin is okay. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't serve. Mm-hmm. They're not. But they what? They're out there doing what they're doing. They're preaching what they're preaching. They're saying what they're saying. They're proper lying. For, uh, they're proper lying. The things that they're proper lying. Why? For their own self gain. For their own pocket. For their own riches. And, and, and watch this. Watch this. There ain't no money in telling people sin is sin. People ain't gonna people ain't gonna jump and shout. People, you ain't gonna pack out arenas. You ain't gonna pack out arenas. Uh, 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 uh preaching convic- con- conviction. 
and repent. But you go pack out arenas preaching prosperity. And tell them people God wants you blessed. And 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 this is the ministry of millionaires. And so everybody gonna run over there because why? Because oh, he, he promised I'm gonna be a millionaire. Everybody wants to be rich. Today, today's society, everybody wants a a a a a a a, 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 a cheap cheap way out. Uh, other than watch this, an easy way out. Other than to do it God's way. Why? Because God's way takes takes too much work. It really, it really is too much work, and, and yeah, that can take a while. It can take a while because you, 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 you got to deal with yourself. You got to bring yourself to the place that God is satisfied, and and and, and He wants you to live holy, and you don't want to. You know, I don't quite want to live holy. Uh, he wants you to do what's right, and I, I don't feel like doing what's right. So let me just go over here to this guy and give him a thousand dollars. Take my tax and tax return. Take my tax return and give it to him. And so I'm just gonna believe that. Okay, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this money. I don't even understand how they think they can do that all in the name of Jesus. Is gonna do it. Like you say, you try to come up some other way, and you can't come That's up it. some kind yeah. of way, and then you're gonna think God gonna bless you in that way that you, the other way that you're coming up. It don't work but, like that. But, but then, like you say, well, no, because we, we're in the generation that people are smarter than God. Either they are just as smart or they are smarter. I can out-trick, I can out-fit God. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can slick God. I can slick him. I can, when you see me come to church and I'm waving my hands and shouting, and dancing and falling out, yeah, God, God now. And, but see, what you don't remember is God, he was there while you was home sitting. <laughs> he seen you. He seen you doing the things you do. He heard you saying the words you were saying. He heard you acting and doing what you were doing. And and and, and, and he, he was there. He, when you make, you make your, your bed in hell, I'm there. If you go to the deepest part of the of the earth, I'm there. Wherever you go, he's there. So there's no you cannot you cannot escape God. You can't you, you, you fool some of you can fool people some of the time. But you can't fool God none of the time. At all. And so this is the thing, you got to walk holy and live right and honest before God. Okay? Okay, 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 okay. He who has a clean hand and a, and, a, and, a, and a pure heart, those are the people that God received. Watch this, Second Samuel 3.25. Thou knowest, Abner, the son of Mary, that he came to deceive thee, and to know thy coming out and thy coming in, and to know all of that do it. So yeah, thank you. So, 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 so God knows, he knows, he knows. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. All right, all right, all right. We did Jeremiah. Let's, let's look at Psalms. Can you give me Psalms uh, 24? 24 and 4. The Bible study from that. The Psalm Bible study. Psalm 24 and 4. And up, no, four. Fourth verse. 24 and 4. 24 and 4. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul of humanity, nor sworn deceit. See that? Read, read three. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, 
who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. We read by the he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is true. This is the second reading of Psalm and truth. That tongue, that tongue devises mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. See? People, people say stuff. Say stuff. If I say this to you, then you, 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 you know, you, 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 uh, 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 oh, 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 yeah. You know, uh, and this really happens a lot in church with with prophecy because a lot of times if, if people, if a guy keep on, on, hit a nerve, oh, God. So a lot of times when people are prophesying, they're not, they're saying stuff, but yet they're watching your reaction to what they say. And if you react a certain way, oh, yep, so now let me work this. Let me work that what I just hit. And a lot of times, it ain't God. It ain't Jehovah talking to the devil. Oh, okay, well, how do you say that? Because the devil, the devil can tell you, your, oh, well, he knew my name. The devil knows your name. God ain't got it. Why would God waste his time telling you your name if you don't know your name yourself? But it makes, and, and this is what Simon was doing. He was going around telling people their name and their doctor's name and their date of birth and all of this and everything. And, and so it was just, that's the devil. The devil can tell you your past and your present, but he cannot tell you your future. So you got to. You got to hear these, these prophecies. I see, I see you as a little girl, and you was cut. Oh, that, that man, that's the devil. That's the devil. That's the devil. The devil, God, God is the only one who can, he knows your future. The devil don't know your future. But, but for a person unlearned and don't know the voice of God, then they're, whoo, yeah, that's, that's, yes, law, yes, law, that's God, that's God. No, that ain't God. There's a devil talking this foolishness to you, and you you going at it because because you 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 watch this. You want to be deceived. I don't think that. I, I don't. I don't okay, you watch may, this. You may say that, but I don't totally agree with that. Because sometimes when people are going through things, they're looking and they're searching for for the Lord to speak to them. And, and when you say that you're a prophet or you say you're a man of God and you operate in that field and they're going through some things, and then so when you when the man say, come to me, come to me, so when, they, when you come and stand up before, before this man and he starts telling you some things, you're looking for what prophets are supposed to do, to exhort, to edify, and to build up. So you're looking to be built up from the words that he's speaking to you. You're not looking for it to not to be from, deceived. Not, not to be deceived. deceived. You're looking for it to okay. you to explore. Okay. 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 Okay.
Remember when I did this up for you? And it's a string on it. It ain't like they're blessing you to be really a blessing to you, you know? And and, and if any time a prophecy or somebody is, is, is ministering to you and they catch a, a seed to or they catch a, 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 what is the word I want to use? A string on it, then you just say to them, say that's not from God. But God don't do that. He loves us. And it, it, it's his great pleasure to encourage us, to edify us, and to build us up, and to give not us for a, a word or something that will help us along our way. It ain't, it ain't attached with stuff. All right, well, we just made a lot of enemies right now. That's okay. We'll because we got, there's a lot of people out there selling miracles and selling dreams. And and it's tax season now, and so they're gonna they're gonna really be selling it, selling you uh, miracles and and come over here and and God said sow this seed and and so and God said do this and God said you better wait and see. First of all, first of all, first of all, let me tell you something. God is not gonna bless you to remain in sin. The devil will. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me say that again. God, God, Jehovah God, is not going to bless you to stay in sin. Okay? Wait a minute. Okay. So you're, you're, you're a young lady that's shacking up with a man that's not your husband, and you believe in for a house. God is not going to bless you with that house for you to keep, continue to shack up. God's not going to bless you with a car for you to go to the club. So, so there's a lot of stuff now. There's a lot of stuff. God ain't going to bless you with money for you to go and 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 drug it up and 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 and, and, and liquor it up and trick it up and go to the strip mall, uh, the, the strip what you call it, the strip club, and 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 and, and make it rain. God ain't going to bless you like that, but the devil will. Yeah. Just to keep you wrong, the devil, and then you say, oh, the Lord bless me. All right, the Lord, the, your Lord, your Lord, the devil bless you, but not God. Why? So so that's why that's why people are trying to buy a blessing, because they don't want to do it God's way. See, so in order for God, watch this. In order for God to bless you, you've got to do it His way. So that it'll make sure you can maintain it, keep it. Well, you didn't get it. You got to, he ain't giving out blessings to people who don't who don't deserve. It. Okay, okay. Watch this. The Bible says the sun shines on the just. Look, okay, that's life. Right. That's life. Life. Every morning you wake up, that's a blessing. Right. Mercy from you every day. But God, God will not take you from mere poverty and put you in a mansion for you to stay in sin. The devil will. Huh? And see, see what I'm saying? People, people are saying God did stuff that, that he didn't do. He didn't do. The devil said, huh, if I do this, then guess what? I got him. I got him. That's why people, that's why, and, and I was looking at a, a question the other day, and say, you know, uh, uh, about people, you know, making deals with the devil. Once you make that deal with the devil, you can't, you can't, after he do what, 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 what y'all agreed on, he ain't letting you go. Then we could die. We're going to be in hell with him. Why? Because you made a deal. Yeah. And so so you can't make no deal with the devil and, and, and then, oh, well, I'm going to get saved now. You know, oh, no, you ain't. No, you ain't. I'll kill you before you get saved. And and, and you're out of the ark of safety because you made the deal. Because he, again, you see. It all comes out of the sea, out of the deception. And that's why we have to get into the Word of God 
that we'll be able to hear the word of God and then we'll be able to line up things that's being presented to us, different, different situations and things, that we'll know what is right and what is not and what is wrong. And, and like you said, everything stuff that's going on is not Jehovah God. It may be a God, but it ain't Jehovah. No, no, no. Because God, God, God ain't going to tell you, to, God ain't going to tell you, watch this. You know, like we, when we were kids, you play games, and you say, okay, close your eyes, I'll fall back. Trust me, fall back. And then when you go to fall back, the person moves. God ain't going to tell you to do something, and then when you do it, you go move on it. He ain't going to change up on you. That I am God and I change not. So His word, you can take it to the bank and get get get, get what you do. Go on at it, get because it don't change. He is God and He changes. Okay, all right. So 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 now, who is deceiving? We just take us to our next our next uh, topic. And set of 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 of, of, of example. Jeremiah, let's go. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna finish that. Stay with uh. We're gonna stay with uh, uh Acts. We're gonna stay with that, but. We digress it for a minute. Jeremiah 50. We, uh, uh, Jeremiah 50 and 6. My people have been lost, sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountain. They have gone from the mountain to the hill. They have forgotten their rescue. My people are lost. Why? Because of the shepherd. The shepherd. The sheep. Jeremiah 51 and 23. I will also break in pieces with thee, the shepherd and his flock. And with thee I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee will I break in pieces captain. Look at that. Look at that. God said, I'm going to tear it all down because of what you're doing. The, 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 the sheep is very important to God. And the way that we as pastors and leaders handle the sheep, God said, I, I, I tear it all down. Before I let you do them wrong, keep doing them wrong. And and as Lady A was saying earlier, yeah, you might get away for the moment, you might get away now, but guess what? It's, it's gonna come a day, it's gonna come a day that you have to you have to pay for. It. You're gonna have to pay for the way that you have treated me, God's sheep. Yeah. Ezekiel 34. It started in the fifth, uh, fourth verse. The disease have he not... No, go, let's go from the beginning. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherd of Israel. Whoa! Prophesy against the pastor. The shepherd. Against. Not for, but against. against. Okay, okay, okay. The, the, the shepherds of the church. Okay, okay. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherd. Go be to the shepherds of Israel that do not, that do feed themselves. Mm. Should not the shepherd feed the flock? Uh oh. Ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool, ye mm. kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. Mm -hmm. The disease have. You not strengthened, neither have you healed 
Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Go back. Go back to the top of that verse. Where where it started talking about uh oh you what you supposed to be doing the disease and the visit to what happened. You eat the fat and you close Okay, you eat the food, you close yourself, you you eat the food, you eat the food that you're supposed to be feeding them, you eat it up, and the shelter and comfort that you're supposed to be providing for them, you take it for yourself. All right, go ahead, read. You kill them that are fed. You kill them, you kill them, your own children, your own sheep. You kill them. You give up in the pulpit and you kill them as sheep. All right, go ahead. You feed not the flock. You feed, watch this. They, they, come, they come to service to hear a word from God. And instead of you praying for, to the Lord for a word for them that's going to minister to their spirit, you give them a generic word. You give them, you give them preaching. But it's not a word from God. And so nobody spiritually is edified because you have not gave them what God would have, what the spirit is saying to that church. Read. The disease have ye not stretched. Look here, okay? These are the, these are, watch this, now what we're getting ready to read, these are the duties of the pastor. Disease. The disease have ye not stretched. You're, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not counseling and building people up. Um, you're charging your own people, you're charging your own members for counseling. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Neither have you healed that which was sick. They're not you 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 supposed to be their spiritual healer. Mm -hmm. And 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 like maybe it was saying, you get what you have pastor. Okay, church, just stand for prayer. You pray in one general prayer over everybody. And you're not ministering to well, somebody said, Well, I got four or five hundred people. So what? So what? You ain't got nowhere to go. You ain't got nothing else to do but to minister to these people. That's what they come for. That's what they're here for. And, and you, you too lazy, you too lazy to to do your pastoral duty. You won't visit them. You won't heal them when they come to church. You won't feed them. You won't provide for them. You don't do nothing but take, take, take. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Look at that. You don't, you don't, when, when, when their heart is broken, you don't go and try to minister to them. Don't take time with them. Read. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Look at that. Oh, uh-oh. 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 Uh, uh, you're not following up on your people. You don't even go out and look for them. Where they? Where is so and so? I don't know. And and nobody from the church knows, and nobody from the church will find out, including you. You don't find out, and you don't ask nobody. You don't. Hey. Hey, they ain't here. So what? Well, if it was a big killer, you'd be out on the phone. Uh, 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 I'll come by and pick up off. When you don't see them. Uh, uh, is everything okay? Oh, Pastor, I could. Okay, well, I'll stop by. Why? Pick up the offer. Because you want that money. But if they're, they're not such a big dealer, you don't even go find out where they went. What's wrong? Why are you ain't been to church? Is everything okay? No, it don't matter to you because they're not giving. Yeah, big givers. The little givers, you don't even care about. Neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have you ruled. Yeah, you, 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 you demanding, you demanding that they bring when you are an offer. You demanding that they give you their 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 tax return. You demanding that they they buy you a car and buy cheap you a thousand dollars suit 
and alligator shoes every week. You're demanding all this, but you're not doing anything for them. What you're supposed to be doing, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. But you have having a form. I preach to them. Yeah, you preach. You preach it. Ah, ah, that's not preaching. But but the, but for well, some, that's what they call preaching. And as long as you hooping and and emotion, emotionalizing them, they they figure, woo, got my spiritual, I got my spiritual fix for the week because you emotionalize me. And and so watch this. All of these things. This is the this is the revelation of that scripture. To heal them, to bind them up, to do all this. When God calls you to be a pastor, He gives you the anointing, the ability to benefit to them on those levels. They need binding up, you need you you're anointed to do that. They need healing, you're anointed for their healing. They need deliverance. You're you're anointed for that. But if God called, but if He didn't, you don't have none of the tools because you didn't. You weren't made. Okay, watch this. Always pick on the Christ for three hundred because it looks like a thing. But when you get a Christ for three hundred, as opposed to a Bentley. The things that a Bentley come with and that is in that car, the craftsman, the, the, the type of, uh, the, the class of leather, the type of instrument, you don't get it with that Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't get it with that car. Why? Because you didn't, it didn't come Bentley is not required to put his parts in a crisis. So, so watch this. When that 300 breaks down, you can't take it to a Bentley dealer and tell him to fix it. You can't take that Bentley to a Chrysler dealer and tell him to fix it. So he said, I didn't make that car. So, so, so why are you over here with me? And so, so, so it's the same thing with 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 people who call themselves or or or, 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 or who God calls. Paul said, I don't have to I don't have to I'm, I'm not giving you my gifts and anointing when I didn't call you. We always say who God called, he equipped, he qualified. All right, so then you you look and see. Well he got a big church, so what? They don't say he's a successful pastor, a successful shepherd. He could be a good, smart businessman. He can know how to. He can. He can know how to do things. He can be crafty. He can. He could. He could. He could build that church in in lies and in schemes and in, and and we've seen this all over the country. People who build churches and and lying and stealing. And scheming the people, and 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 and, 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 and women, quick money, quick money. They, they, they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. See that? See that? Now, uh, a sheep has no defense. So now, so now, when 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 you were supposed to be the protector of the sheep, now he's out there wandering out on his own and no shepherd to look for him, but he's going, and so because he's out there, because he's out there in the wilderness by himself, every, every hyena, lion, wolves, you name it, uh, 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 baboons and monkeys, uh, 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 alligators, anything out there to, that can be prayed, that this can be prayed to, is looking at that sheep. 
I see luck. I see luck. And the sheep don't have nobody to protect them, nobody to fight for, nobody to come look for, nobody to rescue them. And, 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 and watch this. You allow, you, as soon as you go in and looking for that sheep, you allow the sheep to be out there and, and now become prey. Lunch me for the wolf. Lunch me for the lion. Lunch me for the for the hyena. Lunch me. God is going to be requiring that sheep at your feet. Yeah, yeah. And see, we don't we don't even we don't even stop to think that. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to give an account for this. I'm gonna have to give an account because I did. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Uh, we'll see. This is the whole thing. But they left. All right. Granted, they left. But what did you do after they left? Did you go out and see why they left? Did you go and find them? Did you did you just say, hey, the for They're gone. They made the choice. Thank God and great how they're gone. But 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 as a shepherd, if they say, well, Pastor, I'm where I want to be. Fine, I got no problem with that. But I came, I, I'm releasing you out there. You're no longer under my care. I want you to know, because I heard what's going on, okay, so just I'm released. You have released me, I'm releasing you as you're, over, or as you're being under my care. And you just have to do things. It's just, I mean, everywhere else, I mean, jobs, and they, they require you to do things in order. God, the God we serve is a God of decency and in order. And even when you read this in a 34th chapter, it's detailed. I mean, you have to do things according to the word of God. And if that sheep wants to leave and, and they're not concerned, at least clear yourself of that sheep, that one less sheep, you have to give an account of before God because up until the point of them leaving you, you have to give an account to what you, what did you do? Did you, do, did you try to talk to them? Did you try to get them to see? Did you try to get them to see? Are you leaving my ministry going into a, someone else's ministry, somebody to watch over your soul? you got to be concerned about these people's soul. You know, you can't just, you, you, can't, you are not going to be able to stand before God. And, 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 and just throw him a flimsy excuse about they just wanted to leave. Because if you are called as a shepherd, you got to be, you are responsible. you got to know your responsibility of this call that you say God called you, that okay. he called you to. You just made three vital points. If you're called by God to be a shepherd. If you're a hireling, you're not, you're not concerned. But they're not concerned, but they're going to still have to give an account to God for putting on the costume. Oh, 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 okay. You put on the costume and said you was a shepherd, and guess what? You don't made stationery. You don't got a building with your name on it. Guess what? The angels of God got all that recorded. Got all that recorded. So if you got on a costume that God ain't called you to put on, and you out there playing church and, 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 Say you pastoring people, but not really pastoring people, not really concerned about them, and them people end up in hell, God's going to hold you accountable for what you did. And guess what? Them, them alligator shoes, that $1,200, them suits, them custom-made suits, ain't going to do you no good in hell. Ain't going to do you a bit of good in hell. So I'm saying if you're hearing us and you're hearing this word, well, if you just say if you're bold enough to continue to hear Hear, hear what we are saying. We're not saying it to really down you. We're saying these things to you for you to, to take this chapter, line yourself up with it, and, 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 and say, okay, I don't put on a costume that I shouldn't be wearing. Okay, everybody know I'm a pastor. I don't told everybody I'm a pastor. They know we got 150 or 200 people over here. Okay? So then if you ain't doing right with them sheep, then it's time for you to repent. Repent, 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 and, 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 and do the first over and start doing, treating God's sheep 
like you're supposed to. Be concerned about them people's souls. Seek God for a word for these people's souls. Because you got to give an account. Jesus is soon to come. He is soon to come. And you can thank them suit, that car, them house. You're going to leave that stuff all here when you die. And you're going to have to stand before a holy God, a holy God. And you're going to have to give an account. Because the Bible says every man is going to give an account of himself to God. And what can you give? What can you give in in exchange? So 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 if you got you got you got forty pairs of alligator shoes. So God leave them No, but you can't take none of them to God and say, Well, here, let's trade. I'm gonna give you my forty pairs of alligator shoes for for my salvation for my soul. You got thirty custom made suits. Two thousand dollars a piece. You can't you can't say here. I, I I trade you my suit for my soul. No, material stuff don't mean nothing to God. Oh, he own it. oh, he own oh, it. all this material oh, stuff. He don't want none of that stuff because it's his anyway. Huh? Oh, he's just letting you use. He let oh, you use it. He let oh, you wear it. He let you put it on your feet. He let you drive it. He let you you, you live in it. Live in it. And, and, and he let you go vacation. He let you spend the money. But guess what? None of that stuff ain't going to do you no good in, in hell. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it ain't going to do you no good. Come on, let's get it right. Come on, let's get it right, Jeff. Come on, let's get it right. Ooh, it's an awesome responsibility to shepherd God's people. It's an awesome responsibility. And you can only do it with God's help because, you know, you got the stuff and sheep. Nah. You know, you got all kind of sheep. They got all kind of personalities. But God do equip you to deal with these people. And you want to stand before God with a clear conscience and say, God, all oh, the ones that you put under my care, God, hit their ears. I can account for the ones that left that left the sheepfold. I went after them, I, and I seen why they wanted to leave. And they wanted to leave, so I said, okay, I released them. And so, God, I can give an account for every one of my sheep that you put under my care. But for you hirelings out there, oh, my God, come on, let's get it right. Let's get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Come on, you don't want to be a hireling. You don't want to be what this 34th chapter is talking about. You don't want to be that because God has got something for you. As they say, God got a special place in hell for y'all. And, 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 but you got, he's leaving you here so you can get it right. You got time to get it right. His, his mercies are new. Every day. So you have a new opportunity. God will tell you he gave you every day. He gave you day after day to get it right. And you never came to yourself. You preached out. You, you looked in his word and got everything but what you needed to. Even when he brought it to your memory and, and he allowed you to hear it out here in left field somewhere, you still wouldn't even go search my scripture and get it right. Ooh, it's time to get it right. It's time to get it right. It's time to get it right. Ooh, Lord Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time to get it right. Well, the Holy Ghost is speaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Obviously to us, his shepherds and the leaders in the church. As Lady A just said, it's time for us to get it right. It's time to repent and do your first work. It's time for you, as a shepherd, to prepare yourself to stand before God. Amen. So we're going we're to have to stand. You're going to be there one day. Yeah. You're going to stand before him one day. One day. And why, what are you standing there in front of him uh, as? Is he going to be your judge? Or is he going to be the father? If you understand the father, it depends on who and how you how you live. It depends on how you how you will be before him. Will he be your judge, or will he be your father? Is he judging you, or he saying, "Come on in, man. Do you come on in, woman? Come on in, child. Do you good and faithful servant?" Or if he's judging you, say, look, like Lady A said, I gave you shit. You 
he raped him and finished him and, and, and brought the wolf in. And you, you were standing there, a wolf in sheep clothes, enticing the sheep to come to you so that you could rape them and finish them. So, you know, uh, and, and again, you know, we're, we're, we're living in critical times. Now, people... People ain't making it to 70 and 80 years old. People are dying in their sleep more, going to bed, fine, and not waking up. And pastors, that's who's doing it. A lot of pastors are dying in their pulpit. They're, past, they're, they're, they're preaching and then dying. Going home and dying. Go home and commit suicide. Go home and 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 and, and do all kind of stuff. We being killed in in, uh, in uh, accidents, what have you. So so you don't know when your time and how you come on. So it, while the while the the breath is in your body, repent, pastor, become a pastor. Do the work of the pastor. Do the work of the chef. Can I read this here? This here, and then you can close it up the page. It says, Therefore, ye shepherds. Where are you at? You see, your 34. All right. It says, Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, the Lord God, surely because my flood became a prey. And my flood became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherd, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherd feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Mm -hmm. God is saying a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot right there. He's saying a whole lot. Come on, pastors. Come on, shepherds. Come on. Let's get, get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Uh, get it right. Uh, if we were to entitle this Bible study The Job of the True Shepherd. The Job of the True Shepherd. Of the real shepherd. Especially the the I guess you would say the the job requirements. Job of, of of a real shepherd. Yeah. The true shepherd uh uh uh, uh today's pastor. Like she said, it's more than just having people and and uh, people calling you pastor so and so. This is this title, and this and you you you're not walking in the the the, the job. It's not just watch this. It's not. It's not the employer, the employees. It's not the employees who tell the boss, "Well, you're supposed to be the boss, and you're supposed to do this as the boss. You're supposed to do that as the boss." It's the boss who tells the employees, "Well, this is what you're supposed to do." This is the way. So, so the sheep is not the just supposed to be telling the shepherd how they're supposed to be. The shepherd is supposed to be telling the sheep how they're supposed to be. And what is what does God require of the sheep to be? So it is the shepherd's job to say, "Listen, God is looking for you to be holy. Right. God is requiring for us to be holy. Right. And this is what the shepherd is supposed to be telling the sheep. Yes, uh, uh, this is what God requires. Not the sheep telling the shepherd. This is what this is what I require. And this is the thing that that has become now." Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Now the sheep is telling the shepherd their requirements, and the shepherd better live up to 
If you want me to keep coming here, this is what you got to do. If you want my money to keep coming, then you, don't you preach on a certain thing. Don't you, and we heard this all over the country where, where, where people in the church are telling their pastors, you want me to stay here and keep paying, giving you my tithes and my offerings, and you want this, then don't you preach on, preach on fornication, don't you preach on adultery, don't you preach on uh, uh, shacking up, don't you preach on homosexuality, don't you preach on this, don't you preach on sin, don't you preach on that. Now, look at that. The sheep are telling the shepherd what to do. Instead of the shepherd telling the sheep, giving them instruction on what God wants, the sheep is telling and dictating to that shepherd and woe to the shepherd that follow behind the sheep. That follow behind a dollar. That hold back his sword for blood. Instead of telling the people the truth, you won't tell the people the truth. Why? Because you are for a dollar. And then the Bible uh, claim to tell you this not to be for a Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That's enough for tonight. We thank you. We thank you for listening. This is Apostle Stephen Amaka. And this is Laye. Until the next time, be blessed. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We would love to hear from you. You may contact our ministry office by calling 754-244-6585. Again, that's 754-244-6585. By writing us at Deliverance by Faith Ministries, 300 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. Again, that's 300 Marcus Garvey Boulevard, Brooklyn, New York, 11221 by email www2 at gmail.com. Again, that's www.deliverancebyfaith2 at gmail.com. We pray that this broadcast has motivated, encouraged, and enlightened you. Thank you so much for listening.